20 years ago, the Curry Commission set out a, a, a new vision of reconnecting the bits of the food chain to try and connect agriculture with the environment and with consumption. And it said the way to do that is to let the retailers become those mediators. 20 years on, we're very skeptical about that. The retailers are very powerful. They're too powerful. And farming is squeezed, actually. Even if you're a big farmer, you're squeezed. You're dependent with very few outlets on where you can send your produce. And also, there's been a revolution since the Second World War in what we eat, how we eat, the nature of diet has changed, and there's a lot of interest in this new phrase, ultra-processed foods. I know the people who created that phrase, uh, and in fact they were drawing very explicitly upon very old lines of research in public health nutrition, actually. But it's caught on, and it's great, because it's recognising, and people are now recognising, that a lot of what we eat might look like food, taste like food, but is basically an excuse for salt, fat and sugar to be combined and, and that's giving us a, a really bad level of inequality in health. So the, the interest in ultra-processed foods is, I think, a really phenomenal opportunity for farming to start connecting with modern consumers. They're anxious about this. And the studies show that the Brazilian team that coined the phrase ultra-processed food did a big study in which Britain was found to have the highest percentage of ultra-processed food in its consumption. And it's going up and up. And the state, government, public health, in theory are interested in it, but aren't doing anything about it. So it's getting worse. And at what point will we decide to do something about it? I see that as a problem not of the state, but I see that as a problem of us, the people. What we've got is this pressure building up, but we haven't got leverage in where the decisions can be made, to be frank. And there's a lock-in to the old ways of doing things, the bad systems of farming, the long supply chains, the extraction of value down two long supply chains. It's a mess, but now we know it's a mess, and we're beginning to experiment in bits of it, uh, but it's got to be lifted. And nothing will change until we get change at the centre. The politicians are frankly drifting. They're not helping us, but that is normal. I don't blame the politicians. They'll only do things if we push them. We need to have the politicians to do things to capture and accelerate what is being discussed at Groundswell, to put public health, consumption, land use, shorter chains, better quality of everything along the line into legislation, into policy frameworks. Because we can't just have islands of good practice. It's got to be everyone doing it. I'm hopeful about people. I think people can read the writing on the wall and they're not stupid. You don't need a degree or to be a professor to read the writing on the wall. We know we've got some big, big problems staring us in the face. They're under our feet, they're in our mouth, they're in how we're dying prematurely. The gap between life expectancy of rich and poor in Britain and the quality of good health of the rich and poor is astronaut higher than it was in Victorian times. We die early. Uh, uh, unnecessarily in Britain. This is unacceptable. I'm hopeful, however, that we now know that and that it's people which will change that and political pressure has got to deliver it.